That's a pretty good prayer to give to the Lord every, every day. Lord, let me be a blessing to someone today. We're looking in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 10 this evening. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. It, it just amazes me all the different subjects that, that come up in, in this book, the book of 2 Corinthians. And uh, he's come toward the end. And one of the things he's doing is defending his apostleship. You know, you'd think that the Apostle Paul, you know, everybody would just be glad that he came and brought the gospel and all the things that he did. But, of course, uh, you know, there were people that, that opposed him. Uh, last, last week, we, we asked the question, what does an apostle look like? <laughs> and strangely enough, it seems like part of the problem was he didn't look like an apostle. <laughs> now, you know, what does an apostle look like? I, I don't know. And neither did they. But one of the things that we can apply to ourselves is our outward appearance is really not that important. Now, you need to look after yourself and, you know, wash and comb your hair and, and all of those things. But, you know, there's just some things about us that God decides. You know, I'd love to have been two meters tall and athletic and had a deep bass voice. And, you know, there, if I got to choose, I'd have chose different. But I didn't. <laughs> And, uh, you know, we just need to be happy with the way God makes us. If you can't change it, just thank the Lord for it. Uh, in verse 10 of chapter 10, uh, the report was, His letters say they are weighty and powerful, but His bodily presence is weak and His speech contemptible. <laughs> they didn't like the way He talked. His accent or whatever it was, who knows. It's what's inside that's important. And uh, one of the things He talked about in verse 1 was uh, the meekness and gentleness of Christ. That's the way he wanted to operate, was to be like Jesus. Uh, so when you're worried about how you look, uh, just remember the Apostle Paul. <laughs> you know, God, God made you the way you look, and, and if you look different, you wouldn't be you. We're glad you look like you do, and so is God. The second thing we looked at was, what does an apostle look to? And we, we saw that uh, they look uh, to God's weapons in, in verse 4 there. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And the application we make as Christians is, you know, it's not the things of the world that are going to make the difference. It's the things of God. And God has things that He has set up that we can use as Christians. You know, the Holy Spirit and His Word and, and so on. As well, He looked to God's authority. And that's so important. Uh, it's not what we think that, that matters. It's not what culture thinks that matters. It's what does God say? What does God say is right and wrong? Now there in verse 8, he had said, Though I should boast somewhat more of our authority, which the Lord hath given us for edification and not for your destruction, I should not be ashamed. He didn't have to apologize that God had made him an apostle. <laughs> you know, that was just, it wasn't his choosing. God just did it. And the reason that's important, now I'm not actually emphasizing the main importance, which is if Paul wasn't an apostle, much of what we read as the New Testament is not worth reading. It's very important that he's who he says he is, that who he, he's who God says he is. And uh, he looked to God's authority, not his own. Uh, as well, he, he looked to honesty and character. We saw in verse 11, um, they were accusing him of different things. And he said, let such and one think this, that such as we are in word by letters when we're absent, such will we be also indeed when we're present. Now, he was just honest and open. What he wrote would be the same as what he spoke when he was there. He didn't change by the, by the situation. Well, tonight we're going to look at what does an apostle look for. Now, there's a bit of overlap in, in all of this, but we're just working our way through chapter 10 here. And let's read, uh, starting with verse 12, just verses 12 and 13. For we dare not make ourselves of the number, or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves, but they, measuring themselves by themselves, and comparing themselves among themselves, are not wise. But we will not boast of things without our measure, but according to the measure of the rule which God hath distributed to us, a measure to reach even unto you. A great verse there, because you know, a, a lot of people are looking all around them and saying, well, I'm not so bad compared to them. 
I'm, I'm better than them, and so on. Uh, I'm going to use a word here. The Apostle Paul looked for God's criterion. Criterion. It, you could use the word standard. He looked for God's standard. Uh, he uses the word there, measure. It's important what God measures, not just what the world thinks. Uh, the word criterion, I'll give you a definition, it's a standard of judging, a rule or test by which anything is tried, informing a correct judgment, respecting it. Uh, the word standard, here, here's a good definition, that which is set up and established by authority as a rule. You, you've seen it in, in culture where there's a standard. Uh, no, that's no good, it doesn't meet the standard, you know. And uh, somebody, some authority sets a, a standard. Well, the one we're talking about is God's standard. God's authority uh, says this is, this is the way. Most people look for the average, you know. They look around. Verse 12 is such a great verse. Uh, we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of people who commend themselves, don't they? They measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. Uh, I stood next to a man this week that if everyone was his height, I would be a giant. <laughs> uh, you know, I could, I could find people that I was a lot stronger than, and you know, oh, what a strong man, you know. Uh, you, can, you can always find somebody that will make you look good in one way or another. Um, but, you know, that, that's not the standard. And with spiritual things, you know, you can look around and say, oh, you know, we're better than them, or I'm better than he is, or whatever. God is the authority, and Jesus is our standard. Uh, there was a sign in our kitchen at Bible college that said, is good enough, good enough? <laughs> I always remember that, that sign. And, you know, that's the way a lot of people look at life. Hey, good enough. Well, that's, that's not the standard. You know, we don't measure ourselves among ourselves and by ourselves and so on. Uh, we're looking for uh, God's measurement according to the measure of the rule which God hath distributed to us. This, this is something I think we need to contemplate seriously. You know, we make a little bit light of it, but uh, it's important whose standard we're seeking. And, and if you're not careful, uh, you can get away from God's standard just to whatever is going on. You know, as a, as a society, we tend to kind of keep going down, don't we? And uh, we need to be careful. I found this. Most people I meet are not even looking at all for God's standard. You know, the, the average person you talk to, they're not thinking, oh, what is God? You know, what's God's standard? What's God's authority on this? Uh, they're not even, not even thinking about that. Well, listen, as Christians, we should. You know, we don't expect the world to do that, but we should. You know, we sang the song, make me a blessing. Well, make me right. You know? we, should, we should have an attitude. What does God want for me today? Few live according to the measure of the rule which God hath distributed to us, but we should. Now, let me just mention a couple of things, and these are very, uh, very basic. One is in salvation. You know, salvation is not something that we decide about. Uh, many of the people I meet don't even think they need salvation. You know, it doesn't even come up. But Jesus said, ye must be born again. God says it's a necessity. Uh, Luke 13, 3, he, uh, there, there'd been a disaster where a lot of people were killed. And Jesus said, except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. You know, people need to be saved. Uh, Hebrews 9, 27 says, it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. And yet a lot of people don't even look for, for God's standard about salvation, about eternity. Ask somebody this week, do you ever think about eternity? Just, just ask them that. Do you ever think about eternity? And I'm, I'm amazed that quite often people say, no, not really. There are some that do. You know, God is working in their heart or, you know, whatever their situation. Uh, many people don't even think about it. Others think that they can save themselves. But that's not God's standard, see? That's most of religion, other than Christianity. See, basically religion is work and try and please whatever deity you believe in, and, and maybe it'll all turn out. 
God says it's not by works of righteousness, which we've done. That's God's standard. Oh, I forgot to get Ian. Could somebody go and get Ian? 43 Quam Dean. Who, who could do that for me? Um, she, she would do that. Uh, give him my apologies, will you? If he, if he won't come, that's fine. But Oh, man, I even wrote it down. Sorry. All right, back to the sermon. Boy. You know why I'm thinking of that? Because I was really hoping Ian would hear this message tonight. Anyway, God says that we're all sinners. He says we're condemned by our sin. He says that he died for our sin and that salvation is a gift he paid for. And you know, if we refuse his gift... The Bible says we're choosing hell. And what a, what a terrible thing that is. And yet, that's God's standard. He offers us salvation as a gift by his payment. You know, someday we're going to stand before God alone. Uh, there's a song in our, our last hymn, no, it's not in this one, What Will You Do With Jesus? And, uh, you know, really, uh, this is exactly what's going to happen. Someday... You're going to stand before God and you're going to give an account of what you've done with Jesus Christ. What will you do with Jesus? Neutral you cannot be. Someday your heart will be asking, what will you do with me? And, uh, you know, that's, that's exactly what God says ab about salvation. Uh, there will be no comfort in agreeing with the crowd if you stand before God without Jesus. In John chapter 5 and, and verse 39... Jesus said, search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me, and you will not come to me that you might have life. You know, there's people who say, oh yeah, we believe the scripture, we just don't believe in Jesus. Well, the scriptures are all about him, every book, every, every part. They are they which testify of me, and you will not come to me that you might have life. See, that's God's standard. God says there's only one way to heaven, and it's through Jesus Christ. Now, we have a plaque on our pulpit. I, I had it put there. Sir, we would see Jesus. You know, that's our goal. You know, whatever we're preaching, we want you to see Jesus Christ. We need God's standard for salvation. Remember the definition we gave? That which is set up and established by authority as a rule. That which is set up by God's authority is what we're looking at as a rule. Uh, we need God's standard for serving the Lord. It's kind of a strange thing how many people who claim the name of the Lord don't have any standard for service. It's, as a pastor, you, you, know, you see a lot of different things. and you know, Some people can do the least little thing for God and be so proud. Oh, and it's almost like, you know, I, I thought about doing something for the Lord. Wasn't, wasn't that good? <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't necessarily that he even did anything. Uh, we can do such a little bit and think, oh, you know, what? We, we really killed a big one. Uh, you know, the Bible said there, as we read, not commending ourselves. And God does have a standard for service. I think there's an attitude that we need to have. It's, it's expressed in Luke 17. You've read this before. Luke 17, verse 7. Now, most of us have probably never had a servant plowing or feeding cattle, but anyway, you, you know what he's talking about. Which of you having a servant plowing or feeding cattle will say unto him by and by when he has uh, come from the field, go and sit down to meet? Let me just say this about the King James Version. By and by means at once. I was an adult before I knew that. <laughs> by and by doesn't mean later. That that's could have been a, a perversion of, of what, it, what it meant at that time. By and by meant at once. Anyway, he will say unto him by and by when he's come from the field, go and sit down to meet. And will not rather say unto him, make ready wherewith I may sup and gird thyself and serve me till I've eaten and drunken and afterward thou shalt eat and drink. Doth he thank that servant because he did the things that were commanded him? I trow not. There's another old word. I, th I, th I think not. So likewise ye when ye shall have done all those things which are commanded you, say... We are unprofitable servants. We've done that which was our duty to do. 
if all we do is what God has commanded us to, that doesn't bring a profit. That just brings us to the bottom line. <laughs> you know, we're, we're, we're unprofitable servants. And really, that should be our attitude. Uh, God's standard is for us to serve, for us to, to be His servants. In another place, Jesus said to them, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do the things that I say? It just doesn't make sense to call him master and, and not obey him. In uh, Matthew 25, verse, verse 21, he had said, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. You, you know, as we're, we're faithful with the little things, God blesses us with more. That's the way it works. Uh, the, um, I meant to say that the verse there in, in Luke 17 where he talks about the servant, that was, that was prompted by this question or this statement from the, uh, the disciples. The apostles said unto the Lord, increase our faith. And that's when he then gave the story about the, the servant. And, uh, and he said, when we've done all those things which were commanded, say we're, we're unprofitable servants. Our faith will increase as we serve the Lord. You know, you'll, you'll find sometimes you'll, you'll be afraid to serve the Lord. Listen, when you move past that fear, you'll move into faith. Sometimes you won't feel qualified. You think, oh, somebody else could do it better. Let me tell you, the, the people who could do it better just aren't always going to be doing it. And sometimes we just have to do the best we can with what we have. And it'll increase your faith. God will bless you because of it. It's a wonderful thing. God's standard for, for service is to obey. It's expected of us. <laughs> it builds our faith. And, and we just leave the rewards up to God. You know, like I read there, he said to the one good and faithful servant. Later on in that same chapter, he says to someone, thou wicked and slothful servant. The rewards will come by whether we're faithful or not. God's standard, his criterion, his measure is obedience to him and to his word. Paul looked for God's criterion, God's measure. He wanted to be a, a faithful servant. Um, but you know, Paul also looked for God's calling. If you're there in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, and uh, let me read verse 14. He says, For we stretch not ourselves beyond our measure, as though we reached not unto you. For we are come as far as to you also in preaching the gospel of Christ, not boasting of things without our measure, that is, of other men's labors, but having hope when your faith is increased that we shall be enlarged by you according to our rule abundantly, to preach the gospel in the regions beyond you, and not to boast in another man's line of things made ready to our hand. Uh, one of the ways this applies to us is that Paul was doing what God had called him to do. This was God's calling for Paul. Not boasting of things without our measure. He wasn't trying to be somebody else. He wasn't trying to do something that uh, just because somebody else had done it. God called him to this. Now, God's standard is the same for all Christians. Yeah, there, there's things in the Bible that are true for er every one of us. But God's calling can be different for, for every Christian. What God calls me to isn't necessarily what He calls you to. Can you imagine if every Christian was a pastor and a man? <laughs> Wouldn't work, would it? Uh, you know, there's, different, there's differences. Uh, we might have different spiritual gifts. We, we might do the same ministry and have different spiritual gifts. Uh, you see it. You see pastors whose gift is prophecy. Others whose gift is mercy. Some their gift is is teaching or ruling or, you know, whatever. And they, they do the same ministry, but they have a little different approach because they're different. We have different abilities. Man, I, I hear guys preach and think, man, I could never preach like that. I hear other guys preach and I think I'd never want to preach like that. <laughs> but anyway, uh, uh, there's different personalities. There, there's different things. Lots of different things about us. And we don't have to be, you know, we're not just ducks in a row. God made us as individuals. If you want to... If you want to lose your personality, become a Buddhist. <laughs> they disappear into you know, to nothing. Who would want to do that? I don't know. Um, but God made us as individuals, and he calls us, 
and, and he, he uses us uh, to, to be a, a blessing to others. In Galatians chapter 6 and verse 4, he says, But let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone, and not in another. You know, we need to see, what, what does God want for me? How does God want to, to use me? I found it interesting, I was just thinking about it. You know, when Paul got saved, he was on the road to Damascus. The first thing you hear him say is, who are you? <laughs> but then, uh, I believe that's when he got saved. And the first thing I believe he says as a Christian is, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? Isn't that great, you know? The very first thing. And that should be our, our attitude. God's calling for me. Lord, what would you have me to do? And, and this is not referring to, to things that we're all to obey. Uh, you know, we're all to be active church members and abstain from sin and, and so on. Uh, this is referring to God's unwritten call to individuals. What do you want me to do? You know, who, who should I marry? Uh, what, what job should I do? Uh, where should I live? You know, these are things that we, we pray about and, and seek God's, God's will and His call. But let me say this, God's written and unwritten will will not contradict you know, God won't call you to do something that disagrees with his standard. I've heard people confuse those. I remember one man, he, he left his family to serve the Lord. And no, that's, that's not God's call. It, God has a standard. Husbands, love your wives. Yeah, family and, and so on. Uh, I've heard of people where they, they've always wanted to live somewhere, so they move there. No church there but they move there anyway. Uh, listen, God calls us to assemble. In our constitution or in our covenant, we put this. We purpose that when we remove from this place, we will as soon as possible unite with some other church of like faith and order where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word. In the event there is no such church, we will seek with the Lord's help to establish one. <laughs> you know, that's what we covenant together. And listen, if you're going to move somewhere and you don't feel capable to start a church and there's no church, don't move there. Yeah, look to God's standard. And then look for God's, God's call based on that. Looking for God's standard and God's calling then leads to God's commendation. That's, that's the last couple of verses there, verses 17 and 18. He that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. For not he that commendeth himself is approved, but whom the Lord commendeth. You know, for us as Christians, it's not just doing the best we can. It's seeing, well, what does the Lord want me to do? And as we obey, God is glorified. God will ask you to do some amazing things. It's exciting being a Christian. He'll stretch you. You know, he'll get you to do things you never, you never thought you'd even attempt. I've often heard people say, boy, five years ago, I never thought I'd be doing this. <laughs> uh, well, listen... A lot better to be doing something for the Lord than uh, going the other way, you know, doing terrible things you never thought you'd do. And, you know, as we obey, God is glorified. And we look for God's, God's commendation. In Galatians chapter 6 and, and verse 9, he says, Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. In Philippians 2, 16, it was, it was our theme verse last year. Um, he said, Holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. You know, just serving the Lord, seeing His standard, His call, and seeking His, His commendation. Looking for God's... Paul looked for God's criteria. Uh, Paul looked for God's calling. And he also looked for God's commendation. That's a good thing. L let me read what he, one of the things he wrote right before the end of his life. It's 2 Timothy 4, verse 6. 2 Timothy 4, 6, I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I've finished my course. I've kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love is appearing. He was looking for God's commendation. God's well done. You know what a blessing that will be someday to stand before the Lord, and, and to hear him say, well done, good, faithful servant. Uh, 
The question I would ask you this evening is, what about you? Uh, what are you looking for? <laughs> what are you looking for in your life? You know, when, when Paul, uh, on the road to Damascus, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? I think the key word there was Lord. Is he your Lord? Stop and think about that. You know, the different areas of your life. Is he Lord of your work life, of your thought life, uh, of your activities, of your school, of, of your family? Is he Lord? Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? That's a good question to ask the Lord because the, the Bible says, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Give it to all men liberally and upbraideth not. He, he won't give you a hard time for asking. He wants you to ask. And he says he'll, he'll help you. Uh, we can uh, seek the Lord. What about you this morning? Paul was, was uh, not a man that looked like an apostle, but he was an apostle by God's authority. Uh, he looked to God's, God's authority, and he looked for God's standard. He looked for God's call. Not what people thought of him, but what God had said. Let me encourage you to take these things to heart this evening and to be encouraged. Uh, whatever we look like, whatever our background, I was just thinking about it today. You know, God prepares us in special ways. There's some of you that have a completely different life than I had. And God is going to use that and make you a special person. A different home life, different school life, different whatever. Things that you don't get to choose sometimes. But if you'll go with Him, if you'll cooperate with Him, he can use that for, for a good and mighty work that he calls you to and prepares you for. What a blessing that God can use us. Let's go to him in, in prayer this evening. Father, thank you so much for your word. Lord, um, sometimes we, we fail. And Lord, thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for working with us and through us. And, Lord, help us to look for your standard of life. Help us not to be satisfied with the world's standard or our own. Lord, help us to be willing to serve you when you call. Lord, thank you. Thank you that you're always faithful. Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit would, would help us to be the, the people we should be for you. And uh, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.